Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Professor Denise Mourão from Federal University of South Bahia. And I'm going to present with you today why diabetes education at schools matter. E dá um pouquinho isso pra mim, que eu quero experimentar também. Você vai poder comer o chocolate hoje. So here we have a scene of a student at school doing uh, his, her insulin shot and a classmate making bullying with her and telling her that he, he wants to try the drug that she's using and that she cannot eat chocolate. So why bullying related to diabetes is still happen nowadays? Scientific literature has shown a worsening of self-care in the diabetes as a result of bullying in public environments, such as schools. And now also, a consumption of something with sugar is often still denied to a student with diabetes in the middle of a hypoglycemic crisis at schools due to a lack of knowledge of management of this condition. So in this context, we should consider that children and teenagers spend most of the day time at schools, more than 30 hours per week. So also we should consider that we probably will have a 50% increase of number of diabetes cases by 2040. And Brazil ranks 50 in the world in the number of adults with diabetes and third for type one diabetes. Also, we should think about diabetes education in school can has a potential of prevent obesity, type 2 diabetes, and non-communicated chronic disease. So if we improve the diabetes education, we have a potential of also decrease and reduce bullying, especially related to insulin therapy in schools when we talk about especially type 1 diabetes. And in this point, I would like to stress that most of people that needs to take insulin shots in countries like Brazil has no access to insulin pens, but instead of they have access to syringe, which it's a problem in this environment. Also, uh, early recognition of signs and symptoms of hypo and hyperglycemia, uh, making help a student to receive uh, better help from the environment school. And finally, make students multiplying agents of important information about diabetic quality of life. Also, we would like to, I would like to share with you uh, two chronological events to understand how we got in this work. The first one was when I participate of immersion course type one diabetes with educating educators, which is the best educators about the subject in Brazil. And in that time, I saw a theater about a kid having many deals with his take care of diabetes at schools. And also I had the first contact with kids material, which is a children and diabetes in school IDF program, a very relevant material that is free in the IDF website in many different languages, specific to 
uh, work with diabetes education in, in various schools environment. After that, uh, from uh, our practices uh, and literature review, we found that families of kids with type 1 diabetes are constantly concerned about the measurement of this condition at schools. They recognize that the schools are not prepared to help their kids. So we start our work in March of 2019 with my students to make a theater adaptation and kids program for the local schools. Several months later, we start in a small public school with 238 students enrolled and 21 employees. And we got uh, a paper, an international publication about that work, which I am going to share with you in the next slides. So the purpose of this work was to access the effectiveness of using a playful intervention associated with other tools in diabetes education for students and school staff. About the methods that we used, design was an intervention non-randomized longitudinal study in a public primary education school. Our sample was composed by students from second to fifth grade and the employees of the school. And I'm stressing here that we work with the whole employees of the school, not just teachers as other works like, like this, that usually work just with teachers. We work with everybody in school, students and all employees. And our research team was composed by members of the Diabetic Reference Center in the schools of Teixeira de Freitas, Bahia, Brazil, by students and professors from the course of Medicine, Psychology, and Interdisciplinary Bachelor's Degree in Health of UFSB. Our methodological pathway was a pre-intervention interview there we have the sample with students and school staffs. And after one week of that, we had our intervention with consisting in a playful of theater play, true or false game, plus the kids package for students. So this part uh, we make with the whole school community, everybody together. Uh, participate of this. And after that, we have a separate workshop in training for the school staffs, plus the kid material specific for the teachers. Two months later, we made a pause intervention, the same interview as before, with the same sample. Uh, we had a little last, but was the same person's who answered before responding again two months later to understand how much he could take of this training. And now I'm going to show some pictures about our work, this work. And this was the guy that was playing the student with diabetes and his classmates and the teacher complaining with him that he could not use a cell phone at school at classes and he was in a very funny way telling them that there was not a cell phone but there was a glucometer that he needs to use many times per day. And after that and, and many funny things that the classmate was telling him that he could not eat sweets, we had a woman man <laughs> educator, diabetes educator, showing how was the good things that we can keep for health, a health food, health uh, habits of life, and save the guy and the scenario. 
And here we have the students and teachers all together watching them. And this time was when we asked them the true or false game, like a TV talk show. And here we have the working shop specifically for the staff school team. And here are our team of students. So now we are going to tell about our main results, the participants, features, uh, about gender. We have 57.5% of female among students and all females for the school staff. About age, we have for students 7 through 12 years old, and in the school staff, 32 to 50. 59 years old. Level education, we have different, uh, different ones from second grade to fifth grade. And among staff, school staff, we have a completed primary school 12.5% until 43.7% with a complete undergrad. And uh, something that we got in the beginning very interesting is that 71.2% of the students and 93.7% of the school staff report us that having someone with diabetes close to them, so family members or friends. And some of our main results from the interviews we had and when we ask, ask them if diabetes was contagious from one person to other among students, 26% uh, in the pre-intervention said yes. And after the intervention, this number decreased for 7%. All this, um, this test was uh, significant. After that, we asked them if a person with diabetes could eat something sweet. In the beginning, they all, almost all of the students said no. And after the interview, this number decreased for 51%. Uh, about uh, if can a classmate or student with diabetes may need the insulin shot in, at school. In the beginning, we has 43% saying yes. And after the interview, set this number increased for 75%. And some questions we made just for school staff. And this one's one of them. When a student with diabetes has very low blood sugar, like hypoglycemic crisis, should you, you offer him water with sugar or something sweet? In the beginning, just 31% say yes. And after the interview, the intervention, uh, this number increases for 88% of yes questions. Answers, sorry. So in discussions, we stress that these findings are important and since episodes and behavior of exclusions and or segregation are frankly reported by children and adolescents with diabetes, especially at school. And insulin is a multiple doses per day is for several already years recognized as an efficient treatment in type 1 diabetes. So at least one shot will be taken at school. We need to consider that, especially before eating. Recognize many signs and symptoms, the main signs and symptoms in diabetes, as polyuria and polydipsia, in hypoglycemia events could avoid the ketoacidosis. And also recognize the signs and symptoms for of hypoglycemia, 
crisis could currently acting can serve can save a life and that's really really important a very simple thing to to do can really save a life of students so in conclusion a simple education interventions like ones show here can change the scenario promoting a safer and a welcome school environment for children and teenagers with diabetes reducing bullying related to self-care, avoiding loss of conscience in untreated and hypoglycemia due to a lack of proper management knowledge, and make a way for early diabetes screening, often avoiding a suddenly offset of type 1 diabetes in a severe and traumatic way, such as cetoacidosis. So we are very thankful for this opportunity to share our work, and I will be glad to answer, and to, to answer any question that you have. Thank you.